Oh, I love this. I love this. I wish I could put this up. Elena. Okay, we had a, we had a question earlier in the YouTube chat that that didn't get ported over, uh, and I love, I love, absolutely love this question. I want to give you a little trick here that I use for live office hours. And the question that Elaine is asking is, well, when preparing for an interview, how can you make sure you avoid forgetting important details of your stories when you should, what you should say in your response? So the first thing is, whenever you are, uh, whenever you are responding, number one, I'm assuming that you've spent a little bit of time practicing the high points of your uh, message. Now, I have uh, an inter actually an interview intervention. If you guys if you guys don't have have this book, uh, I give this book away free. It's a twenty nine dollar book. I've manufactured it for you. It's sitting in the warehouse. We have a page. You can go to it. You get this hardcover book. You get the ebook, the audio book, and you get a you get an extra twenty seven dollar uh, book called How to Interview the Employer. Seventy five great questions to to ask before you take any job. All of that, you just chip in a few bucks, I'll send it to you anywhere in the world. The reason I mention this book is because in this book, there's a chapter called my Silver Bullet Interview Chapter. There are the what I consider to be the 14 best questions an employer can ask you. But in addition to those 14 questions, there are 43 variations that I've identified. I've told you why they're asking them and what and what they're looking for. Now, when you get to Elena and she's asking about, well, how do I remember without forgetting? Well, one of the things that I would do is I would make an, I would make my own notes of certain elements that I wanted to include in the story. Okay, so when I do this on on the fly, okay, so so there's two two ways that I do a live show for you. Sometimes, like next week, I might have note cards or I might have slides, but effectively, I have like one word or one sentence triggers for me where I have, I have the information that I want to tell you stored up in this noggin in what I call my little memory hotels. Okay, so, so there's five things I gotta tell them. I'm gonna welcome them, I'm gonna tell them what I'm gonna tell them and why it's important that they should understand it. Then I'm gonna give them the, the how-to, one, two, three. Then I'm gonna tell them the mistakes they're gonna make. Then I'm gonna recap it for them. Okay, boom, outlines in my head. All right, you need, write it down and then pick the points of the major stories that you're gonna tell. You, you need five stories. I'm actually gonna do a session on the five stories. I don't wanna get into that now. But of your stories that you're gonna tell, you can use the stories for multiple purposes. That means you don't have to remember so many stories. You only have to remember so many stories. And I wouldn't write it all out. I would just try to write the highlights. Then what I would do is I would talk it out out loud and I would see how it sounds. You know, does that sound natural? Does that sound natural? Okay, that I got to make sure I get that point in there. And then just practice it a few times. But you don't want to write it all out and read it to yourself and try to memorize it because trying to remember it under duress is going to make you forget. Okay, now, that's if you've scripted your story. But how do I do this every week? How am I able to, on the fly, just go and no, when somebody asks me about impatience, I want to tell them this. When somebody asks me about this, I want to tell them that. You could say it's experience, and it is, but it's not just experience. I have to package up on the fly a specific answer, and I have to create one that not only addresses the question you're asking me, but handles scenarios that other people might need. Okay, so in order for me to do that, when the question is asked, the thing that I do is I think about, okay, they just had 200 characters to ask me a question. I'm sure there's eight other things that they needed to tell me, but they didn't get to tell me that, which means now I have multiple permutations and combinations of things that can be going on for them, and I would answer it differently depending on each one of those scenarios. So what I do is I try to immediately process all of that, and then I put it in my head, and then I say it out loud to you. I say, hey, there's three different things we got to cover. That reminded me there's three things I got to tell you. Okay, the first one is, boom. The second one is, boom. The third one is, boom. And so I'm, I've, I've, I've created that outline in my head on the fly. You will need to do that in an interview because when they ask you a question for which you have not prepped, so some, here, let me give you an example. All right, it's one thing to know your own stuff, but what if they say, hey, Elena, we got this project and you know we're, we're, we're about to kick it off and you as a project manager, we'd like to know how you would assess this this project and and what the steps are that you would take in order to implement it and it's to implement this customer relationship management software package for one of our clients 
Okay, so now you don't start talking because when you start talking, you get lost in your answer. What you do is you immediately organize your answer in your head. Well, if I'm going to run a project, there's seven things that I need to do. Seven. Now they know there's seven parts to the answer. And the first thing is we're going to look at and make sure that we understand what the issues are. We'll segment the customers. Second thing is we're going to go and we're going to talk to the stakeholders. I'm going to make sure we're going to gather the user requirements. Then we're going to design it. Then we're going to architect it. Then we're going to, then we're going to develop the software. Then we're going to QA it. Then we're going to convert the stuff and so on. There's the seven things. So the first thing that I would do, now you just put the outline out there and you just said it out loud and now it's registered for you and them. And then you walk through it. So in the first step, here's what we're going to do. And in the second step, here's what we're going to do. And they know there's seven. They won't get bored. They know that they know what it, to expect. They know what's coming. You framed it for them. Okay? That's what I do with you on every one of these. So so that's that's how you, when you have a structure. Now, what I would say is, and I don't know which Elena you are, and I don't know what your background is, and I use that project manager example. But if you're an accountant or a finance geek or a salesperson or a whatever, hey, there's 11 stages to the sales process. Right? You have skeleton structures of your experience. Part of prepping for an interview is developing the methodology and the practices for each of the answers that you could potentially be asked. Project manager is going to get asked about how to implement a project. Salesperson is going to ask, get asked about how they go about selling. Right, You know the skeleton needs to be there. And so the skeleton needs to be there for the historical stories. How did you do that? And the futuristic stories, the situational stuff, how would you do that? The same skeleton is used. This is how you don't forget things. When you, when you got that down cold, there ain't no stopping you. There's no stopping you. Your level of communication will be off the charts. They know exactly where you're going with your story. And, and you won't forget. That's how I don't forget. And that's how I can create it on the fly. So and sometimes you might see me say, hey, uh, you know, if you could let me know that, I'll, I'll take you down a level even. But that's how I do it. Try that. Apply that to your own situations. You, 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 it will be so much easier when you, when you remember the skeleton. I only need the outline. And I know the details if you lived it. If you have my Career Achievements Journal, you, you should be practicing off of that too because it will tell you the data and the details that you need. So I hope that helped. That is a phenomenal question.